Now this video will be uh, covering two things. It'll be covering using the cell fracture tool and how to use some simple game logic to create to create a scene like the video that I posted of the brick smashing the wall. So let's get right to it. So in this scene what we're going to do is we're going to take this brick and the mortar around it and use the cell fracture tool to shatter it to bits. Okay, just to get the mortar out of the way. Actually, let me just click the recorder on. There we go. Okay, I'm going to move this mesh to the side just to get it out of the way for now. Okay, so with the object selected, okay, I'm going to hit N for your toolbar and we're going to use the grease pencil because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be drawing on the actual mesh to show the way we want the fracture to occur as if like a, for example a bullet hits it smack dab in the middle or off to the left well that's when you would do what I'm about to show you so click new and then we're going to the, under drawing settings we're going to click surface okay so what I'm going to do is make a bullseye in the middle of the object the entire time you want to hold in D when you want to draw with the uh, the grease pencil and then left click and hold and now you're drawing I'm using my mouse and it's gonna look terrible but that's okay for this purpose here and I don't have a mouse pad where I am right now poor planning okay now we're gonna, we're gonna switch to the trackpad maybe that'll help and you just pop a bunch of dots and that'll help the computer calculate its fracture. Okay, and let's see if it's working. And it is on the surface, so that's what we want. Let's go to the next side. And the same idea, now we're going to draw, if you will, the exit wound. All right, the trackpad's a little bit better for this. All right. And again, pop the dots. It does not have to be perfect for this tutorial. Pop a couple more. Whoop, let's get that line off. And creating the brick was very simple. You just take a, a cube uh, twice its length on the x-axis. It's be hard to see the bottom. Yep. All right. Oh. That'll do. Okay. So now to actually do the fracturing, let's get that off and right over here, cell fracture. Now how we use it is this way. So we're not going to be worrying about its own particles. We're going to be using the grease pencil. So it'll be the guide to the fracturing. Source limit. In the video that I had posted earlier, we had a source limit of 50. Uh, the higher the number, processing power that you'll need. I'm going to go back to the 50. And uh, this one's kind of funny. Under material, the very first, if you only have one material on an object, uh, the first material is labeled as zero. I don't know why, it just is. So if you wanted to have an object fractured and then on the inside, it was glowing. Your second material would be uh, something with a, an admission and then you would click here and then that material one would also come up. So the inside of the fractured pieces of the mesh would then have that glowing material. Okay, since we don't, we're just keeping this simple, material zero. Margin. For this, I want it to be zero. I don't want to have any spaces between the actual shards. Uh, the greater the margin, the greater the space between the shards. And I skipped here. Uh, random, rather than small. I want the pieces to be as random as possible, since that's, for the most part, how a brick would shatter. And that's everything that we need. And when we click OK, it's going to start doing its work. And all the cell fractures excuse me, all the cell shards will pop up in the next layer. Okay, so to see them, excuse me, to see them, click the next layer, and let's take a look. 
There you go. Pretty simple. Now let's do the mortar mesh. Grab X5. And same idea. Grab X negative 5. Okay. Grab your object or highlight your object. New surface. Okay. And hold in D and just start dropping your dots. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So let's go to the cell fracture here. Again, we're going to use, let me just check that off, grease pencil, material zero, margin zero, and we'll change this to 50. We'll click OK. OK, so let's take a look at the next layer. There you go. So you have your shattered pieces. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add some game logic to these pieces. Okay, so what I want to do now is move these pieces to the original layer, M. Select layer you want them to go to. Let's go back to that layer. Okay, now if I were to go to game mode, see there's no logic to the pieces, they'll just fall. And for the record, I've given the uh, ground surface uh, some physics uh, just to be a rigid body. Again, P. Now what I want to have happen is I want to add game logic to the shards so they don't move whatsoever. They stay in suspended animation until an object comes in contact with them. So to do that, and first actually let's add the object, our projectile. We'll move this here. Okay, and let's make that smooth. And we'll give it a material, and we're going to call it Touch. I'm going to give it a little bit of physics under the excuse me under the Blender game. We're going to do it the old-fashioned way. We're going to change this to Rigid Body. Uh, give it collision bounds. Excuse me, collision bounds as a sphere. And I want to change its mass. I want to change its mass to 100. Okay. So that's done. And we're just going to move it out of the way. So we're going to click one of the shards, and we're going to give it its game logic, and then we'll be able to copy that logic to all the other shards. So I'm going to go here, game logic. And let's start adding our sensors. First one will be always. Second one will be touch. I'm just going to add them and then we'll go over it. Edit object. And edit object. Under these edit object nodes, I'm going to hit this two dynamics because that's what we want to be working on. We're going to be suspending the dynamics. Now we have it all set up. Now what we're going to do is set this up in this way. At all points in time, we will be suspending the dynamics. Nothing will move that piece. And I'll show you if I go to P, that piece isn't going anywhere. Okay. Now, what I want to have happen is when the piece is touched, its dynamics will be restored. And then when it's touched by an object that has the material touch on it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now with that first piece highlighted, I'm going to box select all the other pieces that I want to have the game logic copied to. And hit the spacebar and start typing in copy logic, and it comes right up. Check it off. Now every single piece has that game logic. And when I hit P, nothing's going anywhere. That's exactly what we want. Fantastic. So that being said. Let's find our projectile. Now let's give the projectile its own logic. 
so here always and then keyboard so again it'll always be suspended in place until a keyboard stroke is made that keyboard stroke will be Q and and now we're going to edit object dynamics again suspend dynamics so let's click that up so there we go and then now we can set it up so that we edit object again the dynamics will be restoring them but we're also going to be giving it motion you can add as many things as you want uh, what we had set up before uh, force was 10 on the y-axis. Linear velocity was, I think it was 50. Let's click that up and see what happens. Okay, so again, P for game. Nothing happens. I hit Q, whammo. And only the pieces move that were touched by the actual object. Now, if you want to make it look really professional, you can use a particle system and make little shards fly all over the place. We're not doing that for this particular tutorial. That's how to do it. Simple game logic to an object. Fire it off. There you go. Again, I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Happy blending.